students in India look at Nobel laureates as a sign of great success. How much of mentorship do you think that is very important in you know, making people really passionate about science? Or it has to be a mentoring that challenges the student because you have to grow intellectually. You have to grow in your capacity to generate ideas and see ideas through to some sort of reasonable conclusion. I would say that as a scientist, the characteristic of scientists are that they keep learning. It's uh, very uh, uh, motivating for us young scientists to have an interaction with Nobel laureates. Helps us to grow as a scientist, as a student of science, and also as a human being. For somebody who's deciding as to what kind of science they want to do, the area of research, would you uh, recommend passion and what you like, or would you also insist on some amount of practical... Uh... Almost any subject, when you get into it, becomes totally fascinating. And so the important thing is to have a good mentor, a good lab where you're in a good environment with people you like and get on with and you can talk with and learn the basic skills you need for doing science. He made everybody feel very comfortable to talk, so it was open for all the questions. It's useful for young people to know that if you do science and you do complex science, you're going to get it wrong some of the time. And if you're not getting it wrong, you're just doing boring experiments, basically. The whole idea is that the students are, you know, uh, are exposed to a first-hand experience dealing with the Nobel laureate and also in an area which many of them are interested in who want to pursue immunology as a career. They see that if you choose this path, there's so much you can achieve and contribute to the society, give back in many ways. I think it's very inspiring. I like the fact that even as a Nobel laureate and the fact that he's he's been everywhere and he's learned so much, he's so down to earth and he still has that passion for science. I was very encouraged by the fact that there's such bright young kids and they're so enthusiastic about what they're doing and things are really moving here and it's very impressive. What more can one ask, you know, to the best person, uh, the best immunologist you can think of, and uh, here's a great opportunity for them. Professor Doherty's lecture this morning was inspirational. So what the T-cell does is, of course, it focuses on a modification of the transplantation molecule. That's what we discovered, that the T-cell was specific in some sense for self-major histocompatibility complex. The way in which he looked at the science that was available at the time when he did his work. That was work done in 1973-75 at the John Curtin School of Medical Research in Canberra. Two of us in a lab with a technician, quite young, completely independent, which was fantastic. I did the mouse experiments, Zink and Agle did the in vitro experiments, I wrote the papers. If I'd done the in vitro experiments and Zink and Agle had written the papers, you would never have heard of either of us. Working with academicians brings out fresh ideas and kind of uh, inspires us to come out with simpler solutions to problems. I think we could learn uh, quite a few lessons from Professor Doherty's approach to science. It's been very instructive to go around the labs and to hear how things actually work and what you're dealing with and uh, how it's done and actually see some real chemistry being done out there in the, in the woods. I'm learning more from you than you're learning from me, quite frankly. Thanks to the AstraZeneca Nobel Medicine Initiative, we have had the opportunity to hear Professor Doherty, to engage with him in a really um, challenging question and answer. Okay, thank you. Being able to interact with individuals who have achieved great heights in science, such as being recognized by the Nobel Prize, only inspires you further to do more in the field of science.